Hello, today I'm going to compose a piece of library music uh, live. Something a little bit different, uh, at least for my channel, and maybe the first of many videos to come. Um, so we're going to go into Logic and just basically from scratch, uh, I'll walk you through my process, start to end, fingers crossed, or at least close to the end, of just uh, a plain old piece of library music, something we can use every day. Now, the thing I get told the most, uh, especially from uh, the editor who I co-own a company with, is he just needs a very boring, very simple track. Nothing too complicated, quite literally four chords, even two chords, and I think the track we're gonna do today is simply gonna be two chords. Um, but just something that can sit in the background, because especially with library music, the focus is not the music. The focus is, of course, what's going on in the video, the picture. The music is simply there to assist uh, the emotion of whatever is being played and if your track is complex and it's going all over the place, it's not going to work well in that setting. So you need something that's just kind of happy throughout with a little bit of interesting sparks here and there, which uh, you'll see as we get into this track, especially since I think we are going to do two chords because what's simpler than that? Uh, one chord, but <laughs> we're not going to go that far. So let's jump into Logic. Uh, I hope my face is small enough so we don't interrupt anything. I've not even got a template and I actually don't use templates, surprisingly. I really do like starting with a blank canvas like we have before us. Uh, yes, I do have a full orchestral template I use, but very rarely, only if I know I'm walking into a full epic orchestral piece. Otherwise, especially for something like this, I will start with a blank canvas and more often than not go into contact and then pick something of my liking. So normally, Something simple. Uh, actually, let's start with a piano. I'm a sucker for using my own stuff, so we're quite literally using my old piano. Um, this is not actually the UI you actually get with the one you download off Decent Sampler, but if you want it, that's the name right there. Um, and it does work on Decent Sampler. What else shall we use? I'll normally start with the percussive style sort of sounds. Some marimbas, pianos, maybe some staccatos and pizzicatos. Uh, just something simple. And then we will move into longs and legatos. Uh, yeah, generally, I will stick with my shorts to begin with. And even though I have plenty of RAM, I will actually just go into individual articulations and pick out just the spiccato, um, at least for something as quick as this. I'm not going to start heavily loading stuff. And we'll mix things in later, but I do like having quite a close mic. Uh, let's go into some orchestral tools stuff. Have a look here. What have we got? I do like using some of these things. Maybe we'll use a guitar. Use a Western guitar, something a little bit different. And I'll probably select palm mutes for now. So we're going to go with two chords. D major is my favorite key. So I'm simply going to think about it from a technical standpoint. If You might not recognize this jargon, but I'm just going to use chord one, chord five, the dominant and tonic of D major. Simply put, it's this chord, but we're going to go major, not minor. And we're just going to go between these two chords, basically. And you know what? I want those to last a bit longer. Marimba, let's go with the celli over here. And kind of break those chords up a little bit. I'm not going to focus too much on velocity at the moment because simply I want to get everything in. And I want that a lot quicker. And then, easiest way, just copy and paste all of this. And then now I'm going to start doing a little bit of random velocity. Quite literally. And then certain notes will stand out. It's very random what ones will, but you get some really nice results. And of course, if it's a bit too much, I can go in here and just drag that down a little bit. 
and then just increase it all around. Maybe I don't quite like it, a bit too harsh. Let's put it in the guitar. Yeah, I quite like it in there actually. There we go. And then drag that down to chord five. And I think that's actually transitioned perfectly. It's a bit harsh down there, so take that back. And then I'm going to stick that in the marimba, but I'm going to stick a little bit of an echo on it, a modifier, specifically the arpeggiator. Now I'm going to put a bit of close mic on that using my MIDI. So you can see that, take that down just a touch and then raise that chord up. And I think I'm going to add more notes to these chords as well, just to add to the interest. Let's have a listen to that. Adding some random velocity. So you can see we've already got something kind of coming coming together. Still not quite there. Definitely need a little, make it a little bit more interesting. Just a bit more velocity changes there. Put some maybe deeper notes in. that along. Probably delete that. We don't want it starting like that. And we definitely want that. Actually, if we swap these two rounds, so we have the one with three going there and two going there. So we have that simplicity going to complex. I'm not quite convinced by this pattern actually. So what we're going to do is delete it. And I think add one more note because it is just adding a little bit of a pattern I don't like. Add a Celeste. So what I'm probably going to do is drag down that simply just to get the base there. And then simply advance on what we've already got. So those are our two main notes. And then let's just have a little play with it. See what we can make. Uh, almost melodic wise now. Definitely go up an octave. 
So let's work on a little bit of the melody. Da, da. I don't know how everyone else writes melodies, but I know when I listen to something, especially an accompaniment, I almost hear it in my head, and then I end up humming it and then trying to put that hum into writing. So this is what I'm hearing in my head at least. Call me crazy. And, uh, and then we will simply copy that and then make it even more different. So start off, as you saw, we had two notes. We then made them into four notes and then I'm gonna make these even more different. Add some velocity changes. to it together. Now let's just thicken this up, create some new ideas, mix it up, move it about. Uh, another important aspect I think of library mu music as well is the, the length of videos changes a lot. Sometimes they're one minute, sometimes they're two minute. The ability to move your track around quite quickly and easily so you can adjust it so that it can be a minute 30, it can be a minute, it can be two minutes. Uh, so making it almost systematic so that you can move these chunks around to fit uh, what the person you're working for is after. Now let's keep just heading into this, diving in and seeing what we come up with. I'm really thinking we've got a nice little melody. I'm not so convinced by the accompaniment anymore. It 
does feel a little bit all over the place and I think bringing it together maybe with a little bit of uh, spizzicato strings just playing these chords I'm thinking as well we might want to I'm actually thinking more pizzicato now, actually, then. And just stretching it out just a little bit more to give it room to breathe. Close mic this using my faders. Stick that on the top over here while we work. Just brings it together just a little bit more. And I think as well, I'm wanting uh, I want to say an electric piano. Something else to play the chords that's gonna be a little less harsh. And I want to flesh out those chords a bit as well. We go going for a so probably a C sharp up here. I like that, yeah. And then this do that early. I'm liking that already, just fleshing it out a bit, working on that accompaniment. Had a little bit too much randomness, um, working on my longs now. We need a bass, and my favorite bass, uh, which is something I looked for for a long time and accidentally stumbled across it when I was making, I guess one of the first proper videos I really did for this video. It's the Spitfire Audio Media Toolkit. It's such a random little library, but it has this beautiful, pure synthy bass, uh, bass synth. And I don't like these blopper bits, but just listen to this. It's just a nice, pure bass, really nice sound. Um, so simply just copy and paste that get rid of all the rubbish just to add some meat Stick that an octave higher, just to see how it sounds within the mix. I think it's nicer an octave higher. Yeah. And now it really is starting to come together. Normally at this point, 
I'll actually stick on ozone. I know you're supposed to do your mix and a mastering at the end, but I do like it looking at my overall EQ and you can see up here we're really lacking and there's a little bit too much bass. finish what's going on up here you can see I get easily distracted work on one thing and then another thing comes to mind and it's like okay let's run down here and finish off what we started which was that and I think that should be clean and I want a little bit more reverb on this so simply just make some more decatory And then I want my marimba sitting a little bit further back. I really do like that up. And I think I'm going to use it again on another longer-ish sound. But I think that just sits a bit too far forward for me right now. And then let's just move forward, keep working on that melody, copying and pasting all of that and making sure I go back and keep on track of my labeling as well. It's very easy to kind of get lost in the, the moment and then you look back and it's a nightmare when you, you haven't got everything organized properly. And then I'm just gonna quickly right click that and uh, name and color uh name regions by tracks so you can actually see it properly this is really handy for when you come back to a track and then colors as well so nice little bit of split makes it look pretty what can i say okay let's work on that melody and we might split it between two instruments actually eventually but for now i'm liking this celeste almost christmas vibes which is very fitting uh for recording this on the 21st of December. Uh, and we're gonna take this, I think, copy this one back in. Have a quick look at that, play it through, and keep writing. And then I think what we're gonna do is just the beginning bit actually that probably should just be an octave higher it's amazing what an octave can do Something like that. And now I'm really starting to feel like I should split these instruments up. All right. Let's have another instrument. Do we want a string instrument? Oh, let's have a look. I'm thinking now maybe a legato or even a flute. Uh, violin. Actually, I really do like the viola on this. And do some MIDI recording. Stick that there for now. I'm used to having my full screen when composing. Um, but there's plenty of room for stuff. Right, let's jump that down there. And probably ditch all of that. and see how this works. Recording this line. Hmm. 
join that all together have a quick look i am not happy with that at all really expression i'll normally just leave at 100 percent and mess with the dynamic you know what let's take that back just a little bit on the vibrato at the end so I'm going to take that off just a touch and overall I actually quite like that I'm just going to drag that down a little bit <laughs> you know what it's stick of violin is I'm feeling that's a I'm not feeling that one Go back into here, just a little bit of that, and let's play it again. Nope, I'm still not feeling it. Um, I'm veering towards a wind instrument, actually, maybe a flute. So let's load up the good old BBC Symphony Orchestra by Spitfire Audio and stick in a solo flute which I believe does come with the core I use the pro version but that's because of the mic positions I'm about to use um, because this is more of a small ensemble piece so I am going to 100% use some of those closer mic'd instruments uh, flute flute solo and go in over here. I don't want mix one. I want my close wide and stereo. And then let's just play it and see what happens. Yeah, it's a wind and that's what we want. That's exactly what we wanted. I am not the biggest fan of this modulation though. So I'm going to re-record all of that. And see what happens. space so I'm probably going to stick the close wide off and put the mids on instead and we'll turn the stereo slightly down maybe a touch of reverb is actually add a little bit of post reverb on the entire thing and probably turn it off and on just because at the moment everything does feel rather close but mixing it all together it's nice just to stick a little reverb on right at the end which I feel really does bring it nicely but you probably don't want it on the entire time you're composing <laughs> Just going to increase the volume ever so slightly because I feel it's a little bit too quiet for my liking but I've kind of maxed out everything <laughs> that 
that's exactly what I want. I think we're definitely going to need some percussion, but I almost want to go back to simpler days now with the piece from that point. Um, almost have a little crescendo here, maybe with a double um, big bass drum. then have that just played in the flutes. If we cut this up a little bit, put that there, almost want a crescendo here. Probably one of my favorite things to do in a piece is one of these. And I'm just gonna duplicate that because I'm going to want to go back into that library and grab myself some metal. So it's that one. So if I just quickly record in that. A little bit of a delay on that. Make sure that actually is on point. And then here we want our bass drum roll, which is gonna be, go and we will record that in hmm wasn't so convinced by that but the beauty of post And just to make it a little bit different, I'm going to stretch these, I think, just to elongate it to make these just a little bit more different because they're getting a little bit boring and we want kind of a change here. And I think we're gonna leave it there for today. Let me know in the comments down below if you want a part two and I will leave this track here and I won't touch it and we will continue where we left off if you want that. But I hope you've uh, learned something at least about my process of uh, composing music. Uh, I try and do it. Uh, so that it's very flexible and you can move things around a lot, very much systematic in blocks uh, and especially for library music that makes it uh, a lot easier to move things about upon request. It's a lot of fun, I love composing, it's <laughs> what I want to do ultimately uh, full time for a living. But thank you so much for watching, I will see you in the next video.